Hello, and welcome back to True Crime Phenomenon. Uh, this is Josh, and I'm back with the phenom of the week, Luca Rocco Magnata, hunting an internet killer, uh, Don't F With Cats, which is a Netflix documentary. Now, uh, where we left off was, you know, kind of going into the biography of Luca, you know, how he killed some cats on uh, on the internet, posted it, and was kind of trolling, uh, trolling the internet as well as a group of internet sleuths. So where we uh, left off specifically was they created a small group, uh, a private group, in order to keep Luca from infiltrating the group or anybody else that might be sympathetic to his cause. So they're trying to kind of limit the amount of people that come in, people that take it a little bit more seriously, and people that they can vet. So uh, last time we left off, they were going through dumping all the screens, going through all the different information, and they find out that uh, Luca Rocco Magnata is a person they should be looking for. They look at the pictures, they compare them to the video and the pixelated picture, and you know, voila, he looks just like the guy. So um, essentially what they start doing is a deep dive into who is Luca Rocco Magnata. So uh, first thing they found was an audition tape for Cover Guy, this reality TV show. And in that, you know, you kind of see this, you know, Rocco, uh, Luca Rocco Magnata up there, real vain, <laughs> really vain guy. And uh, he's got a very deep voice, shallow you know, he swings his coat over his shoulder, you know, like, oh, look at how handsome I am. You know, people tell me I'm devastatingly good looking. And um, it's just kind of uh, kind of comical, right? You know, they said, well, you know, you need to kind of bulk up. And you know, he's telling me, oh, well, I, I surpass any goal that I set. And, you know, it's like it's a job interview or, or something. <laughs> and uh, one thing that they notice about uh, Luca is, He's got all of these photos where he's just all over the country and they take a closer look in the skin tones, the head, all these different things just don't quite match right. And they notice that these fix are actually photoshopped. So they're going through and they find all, all the original pictures for these photos and uh, by doing reverse image searches and things like that, notice they're photoshopped and notice that this guy's kind of developing this mystique or aura about himself. So when he does go into these types of interviews and stuff, maybe he'll get the job, maybe he'll actually become famous on his own. And part of me wonders, okay, if Luca had become famous on his own, would he have committed these atrocious crimes? That's something that I, I, I constantly go through in my head. Would he have done this if he were in fact famous and gotten what he wanted to be? So. Uh, Another thing they start doing is they start picking up apart these uh, Facebook profiles. And he's got like 50 profiles, like 70 websites or something like that. Tons and tons of websites. And he's got all of these different sock puppet accounts that he's created with all of these super flattering comments. Like, oh my goodness, he is so handsome. I'm in love with Ro <laughs> Luca Rocco Magnata. You know, he's just so beautiful. And the way it looks is these are actually uh, created by Luca. They all have the same type of verbiage, same spelling mistakes. Like, for example, one thing that he does commonly is he'll put a word, a space, a comma, then a space and pick up another word again. And this is how they eventually find his different postings and things like that. But I don't want to get ahead of myself there. So um, another thing they came across was this Toronto Sun article in 2007. Now, keep in mind, this is three years before the cat videos. So uh, Luca calls into a radio station about rumors on the internet that he is dating Carla Homolka. Now, if you know anything about Carla Homolka, she is probably the most hated person in Canada with Paul Bernardo, her, her uh, ex-husband or husband, when I don't know if they're divorced, they don't really care, to be honest. They're known as the Ken and Barbie killers, just horrific people. And um, Carla Homolka had cut a deal with the, uh, with the local police to testify against Paul Bernardo and stop her from going to uh, prison for the rest of her life. So she's out and about. 
and uh, video evidence ended up coming up later that showed that she was very much a willing participant in the crimes. It was already too late. They cut the deal and, and there you are. So anyway, so Lucas calls into this radio show and he's this total frantic call about people are giving him death threats and you know it's just crazy and they're everybody's talking about him every time he goes in for a job interview they everybody knows about it it's hurting his modeling career apparently he's got this very lucrative modeling career which is non-existent right so you know he's calling in and uh there's a writer from the toronto sun that actually hears this frantic call and the writer reaches out to Luca and they're like, okay, you know, where do you want to meet? You want to come to my place? You want to come to the office? And they end up settling on coming to his office, which, you know, probably, probably was a good idea looking back in hindsight, right? And the first thing that this guy notices is the guy resembles Paul Bernardo. And he kind of paints them as this guy with his life spinning out of control, getting death threats, you know, um, and in my mind, and I, I assume the people from the internet, he's guy looking for fame. Okay. So one thing he mentions is uh, his dog was stolen out of his SUV and all he wants is for people to leave him alone. And he wants his Pomeranian back. He wants his puppy back, you know, considering what this guy does to animals, you know, I don't think he should get the puppy back. I don't even think it, the puppy was stolen, to be honest with you. So um, one thing that the, uh, the internet sleuths do is they start, you know, downloading and going through each and every single real picture that Luca has. Now, they're able to identify which ones are the um, uh, uh, photoshopped photos. So they go through his real ones, and they're looking for the EXIF data on, uh, on the photos, which will give you the GPS coordinates of wherever this particular photo was taken. Now, in my humble opinion, I think that he had anticipated this and he had left EXIF data on one particular picture because he's leaving kind of this thread of himself, a very thin thread throughout all of these different things that he's doing. So they go through this data dump, they're going through all these pictures and they find one picture has the EXIF data on it. And it's at the Toronto Eaton Shopping Center on October 25th, 2010, which is days, which, uh, days before the uh, kitten video in November 2010. And it's a, uh, it's a picture of Luca on this kind of retro style uh, uh, couch. And then, um, you know, he's kind of just lounging around like he's, you know, living this lifestyle of shopping and traveling and doing all these things that we clearly know he's doing some of them, but obviously not all of them. So uh, they eventually find a picture of Luca on a balcony and there's a Petro Canada outside. So they've got a good idea. Okay. He is in this particular area, right? We know that he is in the Toronto area. You know, we've got a picture of Luca on a balcony, Petro Canada outside. And so they start referencing, okay, have we, you know, what other stories do we have around this time frame? So they start looking for all the Petro Canadas. There's, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of them all over the place. Well, John Green comes across a uh, blog entry that Luca made on himself that represent, uh, represents, uh, or sorry, references Edipacoke. Canada in a blog, right? And Edipacoke is apparently a, you know, kind of smaller suburb, and they're able to go to Edipacoke and uh, find all of these gas stations. And, you know, there's far fewer gas stations, Petro-Canada gas stations in Edipacoke than there is in, obviously, the rest of Canada, Toronto, Montreal, and so forth. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because he has in this particular um in this particular uh blog post he's talking about paparazzi are outside of his condo and harassing him and taking pictures of him <laughs> it's really kind of pathetic but you know he kind of gives himself away in this so they go to the different uh, uh, uh gas stations 
in uh, Etobicoke, and they start looking for uh, these uh, Petro Canada, uh, where there's a view to a balcony with these kind of high rise condos. And they keep they go and they're looking around doing the street view kind of, you know, doing a, a, a panorama shot and they come to 304 Mill Street, which matches exactly the condominium complex where he's currently living or was living at that time when, when this was filmed. Okay, so they found the they found the condos from the street view and then they reached out to the Toronto Police Department. Toronto Police Department goes and does a check on, uh, on Luca, knocks on the door and finds out that uh, Luca had in fact lived there, but moved to Russia. Now, so part of me wonders, okay, was this actually Luca that was seeing this or was this actually somebody that Luca knew? Because <clears throat> we do know that Luca was traveling around with a seven year old sugar daddy at one point. Okay, so months go by without any new information. You know, the kind of group numbers start to dwindle down. You know, they at one point they have several, you know, thousand people. They start to kind of dwindle down because nothing's going on. Now, I think Luca sees this and decides, well, I'm going to get their attention again. So a new video pops up. Ugh, brace yourselves. Trigger warning here. Um, Luca. Luca is, how do I say this? Luca has taped a cat to a stick and fills a bathtub full of water. And he's taping himself, dipping this poor cat into the water and drowning the cat. Yeah, which is terrible. Now, uh, he doesn't just leave it there. Same day, second video, wearing a Santa hat, which, you know, harkens back to Jamsy crams a lot in his ass, picture with the Santa hat on. And there's a little drummer boy music playing in the background. And there's an albino python in the bed. And there's a kitten on the bed. And the snake is watching the kitten, stalking it. <sighs> well, obviously, you know that the python wins and gets the kitten. Well, that just absolutely blew the group up. Everybody comes back alive again. Now, um, the post for the video, there was the name Leslie Ann Downey was the person who actually published this uh, particular video. Now, Leslie Ann Downey is one of the victims of uh, Ian Brady and Myra Henley, another couple serial killer, you know, kind of looked like Paul Bernardo and uh, Carla Homolka, you know, brown hair, uh, blonde hair, you know, kind of had that same idea, right? Would kill young people and so on and so forth. So we know that Luca is obsessed with serial killers. Now, um, he's using this sock puppet account to post the videos. Ah, man. And uh, it's based on the Moore, uh, Moore's murders. And uh, he wrote, uh, uh, the Smiths actually wrote a song about it. Now, obviously, he's got a fascination with these serial killers. Uh, the Sun runs a story. And uh, UK reporter Alex West gets a message that Luca is in London, right? So you got this London reporter for the Sun, and he goes out uh, to this address that he was given in London, which obviously was probably Luca, right? And uh, you know he kind of records a strange interaction with Luca. Uh, Luca, for one, denies he's the person in the. Uh, in the picture, that kind of pixelated picture, even though it looks like him, and, and Zanaisi is the person in these particular videos, and he says, uh, you know, are you sure that's not you? It looks a lot like you. Lucas says, have you ever heard of Photoshop? Um, thank you. Have a good day. And just really creepy, and uh, this guy actually got some really, really weird vibes from him anyways, 
So uh, Alex ends up getting an email from uh, John Kilbride, another Brady, Brady Hinley victim, right? That's who the email comes from, uh, saying that the next killing will involve humans, not just pussies, pussycats. So he's already indicating that his next video is going to be humans, which is sick, right? Now, there's kind of this foreboding, right? Nobody would help these internet sleuths. They're, they're bringing this to the attention of everybody in Canada, and the authorities are just kind of ignoring them. They said, look, this guy says he is going to kill. You guys need to take this seriously. Here's what he's done. We all know these are precursors to a serial killer. Please, please investigate, right? So meanwhile, there's a sock puppet account, another one that posts a video of where Deanna works. Now, if you remember who Deanna is, Deanna is the person that works at the casino and uh, she's a data analyst for a casino, a really big casino. And in this video of Deanna's work, somebody's walking through with a handheld camera, All right? So think of this, think of being on the internet and searching for this internet killer, hunting him down in your spare time. And you get this video of, it's basically a veiled threat, right? Like, hey, know where you work, know where you are. So she has to go to human resources and security and just explain this totally embarrassing situation. Just totally, totally embarrassing. Now, um, meanwhile, John Green gets a Facebook message in the middle of the night with a video from Luca, right? Obviously another sock puppet account. He gets a message and he starts to click on the link and he's re he's uh, viewing this video on his phone and immediately understands what it is, gets up, fires up his computer. It can't open up fast enough. And he's opening this video on his computer so he can see the whole thing. Clicks the link and it's uh, M word, P-O-R-N, porn. And it's the murder of June Lin, so murder porn. And it's called One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. And in the video, it shows a nude man tied to a bed, blindfolded. There's a Casablanca poster in the background. If you know anything about Luca, he loves movies. And he took a screwdriver and colored it as an ice pick. So basically uh, spray painted it silver, painted it, not sure exactly how he did it. And then there's a puppy introduced and the song True Faith by New Order is playing in the background, which uh, he had played previously and on uh, one of his YouTube videos going through different slideshow pictures of Luca. <sighs> so this is the most disturbing part. I actually found the video. I didn't think it would show everything. Um, I got through maybe a minute of it and I kind of scanned through a, a little bit and I had to turn it off. It was disgusting. It shows, I, you know, I really hope this guy was drugged because he was despondent is the best way to put it. I'm sorry I'm having a hard time finding words for this because it's just so disgusting, so terrible. And it basically shows him stabbing and cut, well, cutting the throat first and then stabbing the body. And then he cuts up the body after stabbing him over and over with the ice pick. And I think the most disgusting part to me is he starts, starts cutting the flesh off and feeding it to the dog. So he has this little puppy and he's feeding, he's feeding June Lin to this dog before he kills the dog. And I think that's just the most disturbing part to me. I have such a hard time with that. And I had to turn it off as soon as I saw the cutting of the flesh. Only reason I know he fed it to the dog is because of the, the police interview. <sighs> the remains were found in the garbage. And uh, the left foot was mailed to the Canada Conservative Party and the right hand to the Liberal Party. His head was dumped by Luca in a uh, Montreal park in a small lake. And keep in mind on this video, it shows him doing all of these things. It shows him dismembering. It shows him playing with the head of the tub. It's just absolutely disgusting. 
Now, keep in mind also that uh, Lucas Pass shows him in the Montreal area. So the web sleuths, uh, web sleuths start to uh, chase him down in the Montreal area. Now, uh, that torso uh, was originally found in the garbage behind uh, the apartment complex where he's staying at. And the way they found it was it was in a suitcase. He was putting out in the garbage, hopefully that they would pick it up. And there was maggots all over the suitcase. And the, uh, I don't know if you want to call him the janitor or the, uh, the keeper, uh, just not sure exactly what his job title is, but he opens it up, sees it, you know, eventually at uh, 10, 15 a.m., he calls the police department, right? So the uh, suitcase in the alley, back by the garage, and based on what the police and the witnesses say is it smelled of death. There were flies and maggots all over the place, and the police immediately put up a tent so they can open up this suitcase. And kind of this prophecy is fulfilled, right? This self-fulfilling prophecy of Luca saying next time it won't just be, it'll be humans, won't just be pussies. And there's a male torso, arm, legs, heads are cut off with puncture wounds all over the chest and the sternum. Now the media must've been tipped off. I assume it was Luca who tipped off the media. Maybe it was the web sleuths, but they arrived quickly. And the Montreal uh, Police Department was very non-responsive. And uh, Deanna took to Twitter to try and, you know, elicit some sort of response out of Montreal. Like, hey, we know exactly who this is. We've been trying to give you this information. You know, just get back to us. We want to give you, we, we have a whole file for you of all this information on the person that you're looking for. <sighs> And just no response. And I think that's the most frustrating part for me is, you know, I, I do understand that, that tips can be annoying for the police, but you know what, this is credible evidence and they've been trying to give it to him forever. Now, uh, with, the, uh, with the suitcase, they find a wine bottle, which is, you know, something I think they used to drug, uh, he used to drug June Lin. They find a t-shirt, a movie, a movie poster, some blankets, and a dead puppy, black and white dead puppy. They also find a copy of Luca's driver's license. So, he's so stupid. <laughs> and they find receipts uh, for Luca. Luca went to a pharmacy. They've got these uh, uh, pharmacy receipts. So they go to the address that are on the receipts and uh, you know, basically find out what he was buying there. And uh, they eventually go to... Um, uh, uh, his home address, which is also on the receipt, and everything smelled clean, smelled like it had been completely clean. And, you know, basically we're going to the scene to see if there was anybody hurt there, you know, kind of these exigent circumstances, right? So immediately they back out. They don't, everything's fine. They apply for a warrant. And uh, meanwhile, they're checking the security camera footage and they found Luca taking out a suitcase at 2.47 a.m. And he's checking himself in the mirror. Oh, look how beautiful. I'm just completely undisturbed of exactly what he just did that I described. No problem whatsoever. Just completely okay with it. No big deal. Oh, you know, am I still handsome? No, no. objectively no. But, you know, he thinks he is anyways. And he's making several trips, around 20 trips, until past 4 a.m., dumping different stuff. So they find, uh, along with the other items, they find a knife, they find a saw, they find scissors, which God forbid what he's using that for. They find uh, the screwdriver and still missing the hands, feet, head. And at this point, the receptionist for the conservative party found the left foot wrapped in a pink silk paper. Okay, uh, and there's a poem that says, roses are red, violets are blue. Police will need dental records to identify you, bitch. <laughs> and it's like a terrible poem, but just completely describes the type of person that Luca is. So uh, the police department uh, goes to Luca's mom's house looking for Luca, says Luca's not there. You know, so the uh, police department uh, leaves. 
And then the police department eventually reach out to John for all the evidence that they've gathered. And they found the video on murder online. And this is something that really disturbed the detectives. You know, I only watched literally 60 to 90 seconds of it. And it's, it's something I'll never forget because it's really, really, really disturbing. And I just don't know where to put it. Anyway, so they're able to identify the different items they found in the trash from the video. Uh, they see Luca playing with the head in the bathtub. They find out that the victim is an Asian male in his late 20s, early 30s. And, you know, you got the female detective uh, describing this, and she just breaks down crying talking about the video, which I completely understand. You know, I watched just a minuscule part of this video. And it's just disturbing. I wish I had never clicked on it. Please, folks, trigger warning, do not click on the video. <sighs> Anyways, so uh, they found an early uh, video of Jun Lin and Luca. And Jun Lin is wearing this yellow shirt. And uh, Luca is actually wearing that shirt from Jun Lin in photos later. Now, it turns out Jun Lin was gay, and he was living this kind of out lifestyle in Canada where he didn't feel like he could do that at home. He was a student, you know, kind of closed off, shy, and just came to Canada so he can be out, right? So uh, Jun Lin's friend was actually worried and checked on him and actually ended up reporting him missing. And then he heard about this murder video online. And his friend was able to identify from the video that it was, in fact, Jun Lin. Like I said, Jun Lin was a student. <sighs> so meanwhile, they're tracking all these sock puppet accounts. And, you know, they, they know exactly how, how uh, uh, Luca writes. And they go online and they look over the past uh, week, you know, four days to a week before the murder, looking for posts online. And they found Luca's spelling and grammar, and they were able to locate an ad for sex on Craigslist. And on that ad said he wanted to make a movie and said that I'm not going to be sucking any dick. Now, um, Luca put a sedative in the wine and then cut his throat before stabbing it, uh, stabbing him. Now, they describe it as smelling like blood and cleaning chemicals in the apartment. Now, Luminol showed blood all around the mattress, all around the wall area, and uh, the bathroom where the torso was set against the door. And Luca had written on the closet wall, uh, if you don't like the reflection, don't look in the mirror. I don't care. And I believe that's from uh, American Psycho. I do know that the, uh, the song True Faith is from American Psycho. <sighs> just, it's just very disturbing, everything that is in this video. And if you can tell by the way I'm reacting, I'm sorry, you know, but watching that video was really disturbing to me. And Luca really is the Canadian psycho. Because what he did to Jun Lin was just the worst thing that you can think a human being could do to anybody. It was terrible. And I, my heart really goes out to Jun Lin and his family. You know, they don't deserve to have to deal with exactly what happened to uh, their son. They don't deserve it. They deserve better. And Luca deserves to basically rot in prison for the rest of his life. He doesn't deserve another free breath in this world. So that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I just wanted to kind of go through the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, you know, do you think Luca would have been a murderer if he had been famous, if he had gotten the fame that he wanted outside of, outside of serial murder? Do you think that he would have been famous anyways. And if he were famous, do you think that he would have still done this? 
you know, um, I think he would have done it regardless. I think Luca is a sociopath, and I think he has little to no regard for human life at all. So uh, I'll be releasing another video in the next day or two on Luca Rocco Magnata. I'm also going to be releasing another video on Scott Peterson. Uh, I'm up to five episodes on that now. Uh, we just finished a trial and we're going to go into the verdict next. I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to listen. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below and let me know what you think. Do you think he would have done this? if he would uh, would have gotten the fame the way he originally intended? Or do you think he's just a cold-blooded psychopathic killer? Because that's kind of where I lean. Uh, once again, this is Josh from True, Con uh, True Crime Phenomenon, Phenom of the Week, Luca Rocco Magnata. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment uh, below. Just really uh, don't want to say dying to know what you what you think, but... I'd really like to know what you think about this particular episode. What do you think about Luca? Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.